Hello, everyone. I am Lauren Cristella. I'm the Chief Advancement Officer of the Committee of 70. And I'm so happy to be speaking with you today. Joining me is Vanessa McGrath. Vanessa? Uh, hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for this training. As Lauren said, my name is Vanessa McGrath, and I am the Voter Protection Director for the Voter Project here in Pennsylvania. And we are going to help you get some answers to questions you might be receiving uh, ahead of the election and certainly on election day. So let's get started. Um, one of the, the most basic ones, where do I go to vote? That is a great question. So on election day, uh, if someone does not have a mail-in ballot with them uh, or has not requested one, the only place that they can go to vote is their polling place. So one item that may be a bit confusing is that during early vote here in Pennsylvania, folks could go to any early vote center in their county to vote. On election day, they can, it goes back to normal rules. They can only vote at their specific division's polling place. So they can check that at the votespa.com website to look up where their polling location is. We will not have the mass consolidation of polling locations like we did in the June primary, but some polling locations have been consolidated or moved just because of the necessity uh, caused by COVID-19. Some places just cannot be used uh, like they normally would be. And speaking of polling places, how long are they open on election day? Polling places in Pennsylvania will be open from 7 a.m. till 8 p.m. And any voter who is in line at 8 p.m., strongly encourage them to stay in line because they will have the right to vote uh, as long as they are in line at 8 p.m. And if you are voting for the first time in your polling place, will you need ID to vote in Pennsylvania? Great question. Voter ID is always a really popular uh, question. And uh, if it is the first time that you're voting in your division, your specific polling place that you're assigned to, you will need to have ID. This is the only occasion that you should have to supply ID is if it is your first time voting at your polling place. And uh, the types of IDs that you can bring, uh, there's quite a few things that you are able to use to prove you are the, the voter that's in the rolls. So you could bring your driver's license, a US passport, so it doesn't have to be a state ID, it could also be a passport, a military or student ID or your employee ID. Um, if your ID does not have a photo on it, it just, you need to make sure that has your address. So something such as a utility bill is also something that you can use as a form of identification when you go to vote. Terrific. Okay, so I'm heading to the polls on election day and I'm worried about this COVID-19. <laughs> so <laughs> what can I expect and what safety precautions are going to be used to protect the voters and the poll workers on election day? Yeah, of course. Uh, we definitely want to be aware that there is still a pandemic happening. So want to be very cognizant of any uh, safety rules that are posted at your specific polling location. But generally here in Pennsylvania, Folks who are working at the polls, so poll workers, will be provided with face shields and face masks and gloves, as well as hand sanit sanitizers and also disinfectants. They'll also be provided with other types of cleaning products at their locations as well to make sure that any frequently touched services are clean. And in some places, there will also be plexiglass barriers, but that's not at every polling location. And I would just advise folks to make sure that they wear a mask and also maintain social distancing. And also know that other voters may not be masked and they can't be forced to wear a mask uh, to vote, right? So they, ha they have the right to vote even if they don't want to wear a mask. So make sure you're socially distancing <laughs> uh, in, case, in case that's the case at your polling place. Okay. okay. Uh, we cover, this is pretty basic, but a call might come in that just asks, how do I vote in person? Yeah, of course. This is a... A uh, very basic question, but you never know if it's someone's first time voting in Pennsylvania, they really might not be sure there there's been a lot of going on. <laughs> um, so if you're going to vote in person, you look up first where your polling location is. And then when you arrive, you will check in with a poll worker who will be the clerk at that location. And then they will direct you to a private area where you will be able to cast your vote on a machine. Um, the type of machine that you use will vary from uh, county to county. Uh, but that's generally how the process works here in Pennsylvania. And you can go to votespa.com slash ready to vote. 
to see examples and actual um, video and, and photography of the voting machine that you'll you'll be voting on. So you can get a little tutorial before election day if you need that. Uh, can I turn in my completed mail-in or absentee ballot to my polling place? So this was definitely an issue here in the primary and I anticipate it will be a question that you all will get a lot. So if someone has their mail-in ballot, what do they do with it on election day? This, uh, which will be a common refrain during this Q&A, is that it is going to depend on what county you are in. So, for example, in Philadelphia County, you cannot return your mail-in ballot to a polling location. The only options would be a Dropbox uh, county election office or a satellite county election office. So this is something that you will have to look up uh, county by carry, county as it will vary. Okay. And what if I signed up to vote by mail, but now choose to vote at a poll in place? So a couple of things that could happen here. If you have received your mail in ballot and you have decided you would prefer to vote at your polling location, you must take both your ballot and also the declaration envelope. I'd recommend just taking that full package you received in the mail and taking it to your polling location. You will have to sign an affidavit to uh, spoil your ballot is what it is called, and then you will be permitted to vote on a machine. Okay, and what if I signed up to vote by mail but didn't receive my ballot before election day? So you'll have two options with, for a voter who is in this scenario. So if a voter has requested an absentee or mail-in ballot, but it just didn't arrive in the mail prior to November 3rd, so it's election morning or afternoon, I would advise them to go to a satellite county election office or an election office and request a replacement mail-in ballot. So these folks have already completed the application by the deadline, so they are entitled to have a mail-in ballot. So that would be the first uh, recourse for them. Them. If the voter does not want to go or cannot get to a satellite office or a county election office, it's just too far away. The alternative is that they can go to their polling place and vote provisionally. So those are the two options, either acquire a, a replacement mail in ballot at a satellite county election office or a county election office or vote provisionally at their polling place. Okay, and what if I voted by mail, but know that my ballot will be rejected because I forgot that important secrecy envelope, or I forgot, I think I may be forgot to sign the declaration envelope. What can I do? So right now, and we are taping this on October 26th, so I don't know if there'll be any updates, but right now, if you know that you have made an error, if a voter knows that they've made an error on their mail-in ballot and they believe that it will be rejected, they are entitled to go to their polling location and vote provisionally. Um, and what would happen in that case is that their mail-in ballot, once it's canvassed and rejected, their provisional ballot will then be counted instead. Okay, and how can I check the status of my ballot? Great question. So uh, your ballot, you can track your mail-in ballot at votespa.com forward slash mail ballot status. And what, uh, let, let's go into that just a little bit. So if I uh, am waiting to receive my ballot, what should that say if I go to that site? I believe it says requested. It does. Okay. <laughs> Tricky question. <laughs> Not a trick question. Um, and if I've returned it, it will say uh, received by the county, right? Is that the yeah. is the receipt yes. for processing is the actual? Yes, it will say, and I know that has caused some confusing, confusion because folks are like, does it need to be processed to be accepted? Uh, but that's the last status that you'll have at this time. Um, and uh, it, that's all the updates you can get. <laughs> right. Okay, does my mail-in ballot need to be blank in order to be voided so I can vote in person if I want to spoil my ballot? So if you are taking your mail-in ballot package to your polling location, it does not need to be blank. Uh, it could be filled out or partially filled out uh, and you should be permitted by the poll workers, the voters should be permitted by the poll workers to spoil their ballot and vote on the machine as long as they're able to provide both the declaration envelope and also the ballot. Okay. What if I get to my polling place and my name is not in the poll book? 
Yeah, this is a frequent thing that occurs uh, in my many years of doing voter protection. This is a, definitely one of the top recurring issues and voters get so frustrated when they show up, stand in line for a long time, get to the clerk and their name is not in the book. So when this happens and if you get a phone call about this, I always try to be especially sympathetic to these voters because they are really trying and it's like really hurts when you get rejected when you get to the front of the line. So um, they, you should advise them uh, and hopefully the judge of elections will be willing to do this, that they should uh, call the county board of elections to determine if this person is actually registered, perhaps they registered late. It also is possible that they are at the wrong um, polling location is another option. So you could check to make sure that they are at the correct polling location, help them that way too. And lastly, any voter who shows up at a polling place should at the very least be granted a provisional ballot. So they should also request that they can vote provisionally. If it turns out that they did vote at the wrong polling location, their vote will be counted to the extent um, it's a you know statewide or national race. Uh, so what is a provisional ballot? So a provisional ballot is a paper ballot that is provided to voters who believe that they are registered, but that their names do not appear in the sign in book at their polling place. So if you are a first time voter who does not provide ID at the polls on election day, you will be offered a provisional ballot. Uh, do I need ID to vote via provisional ballot? No, you will not need to provide any ID to vote provisionally. Okay, so what uh, what kind of assistance can people get at the polling place if I need help using the machine, or I'm, you know, I'm unfamiliar with it or I can't understand, you know, I have difficulty understanding English. Yeah. So you can definitely are entitled to have some help. If you have a question with just basic questions about the machine, I would ask the poll worker before you actually go in and start voting. Uh, so that's something that you can ask them for assistance with. But once you are actually in the physical act of voting, if you do need help, uh, if you can't read or write, or you cannot read the names on the ballots, or you have difficulty understanding English, uh, if you're blind, disabled, or unable to operate the voting machine in other, any other capacity, you're able to ask for help. So you can have the types of folks who can help a voter are a relative, a friend, or a neighbor. Um, you not, do not need to be designated in the poll book district register as assistance permitted to receive this assistance. If you want assistance, you do have to sign an assistance declaration unless the poll book already indicates that assistance is permitted. Uh, you also have the right to refuse assistance if it does indicate that assistance is permitted. Okay. Um, how do I know if I'm going to be voting on a voting machine? So um, this depends possibly on your voting location, but uh, in the past two years, all voting machines in Pennsylvania have been changed to make sure that they leave a paper trail to record your ballot on. And if you are curious, if a voter is further curious about the type of method that's available at their polling location, uh, they can look it up online. Uh, as Lauren mentioned earlier, the Votes PA website has, is pretty comprehensive in terms of explaining how exactly and the type of equipment that is available to voters. So if you have a various, very curious voter that wants to be super prepared, they can actually go online and watch videos on how to use all of the voting equipment in Pennsylvania. Uh, I've watched the videos, they're kind of soothing. So maybe you just want to check it out as well. Um, and one thing I would just would just note about voting on machines is that there will be a difference this year in that you cannot, you can no longer have a straight party, straight ticket voting. Uh, you can no longer just pick all Democrat, all Republican or other party. Uh, you have to select each candidate individually for each office. Okay. And do I get proof that I voted on a machine? Yeah, so uh, I have worked many years as a poll worker and um, I countless number of voters have asked this. And even though we now have paper trails with our voting machines here in Pennsylvania, you don't, and as far as I know, in any county receive an actual receipt uh, that you have voted. So uh, the answer is no. And what if people need help getting the polling place? 
Yeah, so there are different organizations that are helping to provide rides to voters to get to their polling place. So there's some rideshare companies that are offering discounts or free rides. So that's something that voters can look up online. And there are also local and national organizations and nonprofits such as Power and Project Home that are also assisting voters to uh, get to their polling places. Okay, and speaking of polling places again, who can be inside them on election day? So there are definitely a limited amount of folks who can be inside of polling places. So the people that you will find there are the election officials. So your judge of election, your machine inspectors, majority and minority inspectors. In some counties, they will have constables. There can be clerks, uh, folks who are with campaigns or candidates. So poll watchers and also uh, voters, <laughs> of course, will be inside uh, polling locations translators if your polling place has uh, a need for that and uh, only police officers to the extent that they are in there to vote. That is a question I think that will likely come up and has been coming up in a lot of our training uh, sessions as well. And the approved poll watchers have certificates right that they are checked out with the judge of elections and and the whole election board kind of knows that they're there. Right. Absolutely. And every polling place will have a judge of elections who is in charge of running that location. So if there are any issues, that is the person to go to. Um, the judge of elections checks and verifies that everyone who is supposed to be or allowed to be in the polling place actually has those certificates, um, depending on what county, uh, how they're issued. So and then where do everyone else has to stay 10 feet away, right? Yes. So any electioneering. Uh, has to occur at least 10 feet away. And I would just note that the judge of elections determines where the uh, entrance to the polling place is. So I know personally my poll, my judge is very kind. And if it is pouring rain out, he does let <laughs> folks come inside and then he just sets the polls, polling location starts farther back. So um, it really is up to the judge where that 10 feet starts. Right, so if you're in a school classroom or a gymnasium, people could be handing out literature or electioneering in the hallways to the school. Something yeah, like absolutely. All right, uh, this is a scarier question, but one we get pretty frequently. Can I bring a gun to a poll in place? So uh, this, this is a question that does come up a lot and it might be jarring to hear for those joining us for this training, but it comes up in I think every training session that we do. So I think it's very necessary to address. So under Pennsylvania law, yes, individuals uh, who are legally able to carry uh, a gun can bring it into a polling place. There are some exceptions. I would note in Philadelphia County, you must have a license in order to have a gun. So that is one limitation. And the other limitation would be that you cannot bring uh, guns into certain locations just generally. So the same would apply to the polling places within those facilities. So places such as schools and churches, you would not be permitted to bring a firearm. If you, if you generally can't on a normal day, you can't bring it in on election day as well. Okay. I think that wraps it up for our election day. It gets us through election day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, should we like end on an optimistic vote? Um, no, maybe. <laughs> Not having to call 911. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, I just like would want to say a quick thank you to everyone who is volunteering and helping voters. This is, um, you know, while voters may be a bit more have a lot more questions because there are changes to the election code. I think one really exciting thing is that more voters will be able to vote in this election than have ever been able to vote in Pennsylvania with X77's expansion. Voters have more secure and safe ways to vote more confidently than they ever had uh, here in our state. So I think that's one really exciting and optimistic way to end. Uh, happy to pass it over to you to close this up. Absolutely, session. and if you have additional questions, uh, we are constantly updating our FAQ at wevote.70.org. The Voter Project also has a, a fantastic resource. Drop that URL off the top of my head, thevoterproject.com. That's it. Uh, and uh, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to bettergov at 70.org. Happy to answer any oddball questions or things that might come up. Uh, in the run-up to election day. So thank you all for, for volunteering and for your service and making sure people have answers to questions and a successful voting experience. Thanks so much. Thank you.